Yeah! What up, good people? Welcome to another episode of the 17 of Slick Bill Show. I am your host, Jay Brown, a.k.a. Mr. 17, and I am glad that you are joining me once again. Yo, this is going to be one of them shows. Uh, y'all forgive me if I hit one of these little coughing spells today. All right, straight up, let me see. Yeah. All right, there we go. All right, y'all forgive me if I have one of these little uh, coughing spells today. What up, Shays? Should have been here, shawty. Um, I'm going to try to power through this thing. But we want to thank everybody for tuning in. Guys, you all know this is an interactive show. So like, share, comment. You can even call in 470-251-4343. And we want to thank everybody for watching via the Status Network app, Facebook Live, Instagram Live, YouTube Live, Roku, Amazon Fire Stick, via the Status Network app, and Periscope if you're watching that way. And we also want to thank everybody for listening via, on the podcast on uh, iHeartRadio, iTunes, Spotify, Google Podcasts, or anywhere that you listen to your podcast. Go ahead and subscribe. Rate five stars. We greatly appreciate it. But look, this is going to be, I got an amazing show for y'all lined up today. This is one of those things that's going to be talking about learning and teaching life lessons. And it's going to be dope. What up, mom? What's up, brother? If y'all in the chat room, go ahead and share this chat if you're on the Facebook chat. Um, so on tonight's show, we're going to do since last week. We're going to talk about Alicia Keys. I meant to get to that last week. We're going to talk about T.I. as well. We're going to talk about a little emotions and expectations. And we're going to be full today. We are full today. But we're going to jump right on in. We're going to jump right in. Um, if anybody had a happy birthday today, happy birthday to you. But look, all right. So since last week, since last week, I am happy to say that I have started a, a new career. It has been... Seven months. Seven months without a gig. But I'm back. I'm back. What's good, brother? Mr. Perfect 1984. Yeah, I'm back in these streets. I am back. I'm a Comcast business account executive. So if you know anybody that needs some Comcast, I got you. Internet, TVs, phones, security. I'll let your boy. If you're serious, I'll go ahead and shoot that number to you. I'm out, I'm back. I'm back in these streets. But let me know. Serious inquiries only. Um, the crazy part about starting a new job after after being off so long is you got to get yourself built back up for it. It's almost like you done lost that stamina, that work stamina. Like you got to build that back up because, you know, I don't, even if you wasn't chilling all day like you was doing – stuff around the house, you was applying for jobs all day, you was just doing stuff. It's nothing like having to get up and go somewhere and then be there. And, and, and the training part, the training part has been super, super tiring for me so far. But I'm, a, I'm, a, I'm getting it back. Um, I can think back to, you know, when they told me, when they told me um, that, you know, hey, they was doing my background check. You get all these kind of crazy thoughts about what could be in your background that um, that anybody might find. And you know, I talk about a whole lot of crazy stuff on this show, right? Like I talk about girls, wolves. I talk about foxes. I talk about I talk about Trump. I talk about a little bit of everything. I talk about social injustices as well. And you never know. How people that that might be doing social media background checks and stuff like that um, might look at it. They might be offended. They might, and then, and again, they might be cool. To, they might be cool with it. Um, I remember I had to get a background check when I was getting getting ready to get put on a lease for an apartment, and they 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 denied me at first. I was trying to figure out what was going on. And they had the file up when I went to go see what it was. They had this file up. It had somebody with my name, my social, my same birthday, but it was a white dude with tattoos on his face. White dude with tattoos on his face stole my identity. 
and they was out, like he had a he had a whole criminal record, and uh, they almost didn't let me get in, but it just so happened that I'm not a white dude with a tattoos with tattoos on my face, so they finally let me get in. Um, another thing with starting a new gig, if you change from the last time your war you wore had that wardrobe, and so I went from a job that I had to dress up to a role that I didn't have to dress up to seven months out of work to a job where I had to dress up again. Things changed. I added a couple 10 pounds or so, a couple 10 pounds, so we're going to say 20 or so. And, um, you know, you got to get a new wardrobe. You got to you gotta upgrade your wardrobe. It's that time. It's that time to do that. And so when my, my wife called herself, she was going to be nice. And she went to the store and went and got me some clothes. She asked me what I wore, and I was like, I wear a 38-32. For anybody that's trying to do a little shopping for your boy, 38-32. Cool. I had the harsh reality to find out that all 38-32s are not created the same. Wifey went and bought some of the slim fits. And while those slim fits are fashionable... 3832s are quite inappropriate if you uh if you ain't if you ain't this on the small side of the 3832 side of the game. What up, Ben? How you living in these streets? I tried to put some of those 3832s on and they were inappropriately snug. Like if I showed up to the job with with those pants on, uh, I might have got sent home. If I'd have showed up and tried to sell some of this uh, Comcast services, they might have sent me home or tried to wonder what it was that I was trying to sell out here in these streets. Hey, I'm not trying to, uh, yeah, yeah, like left hand rookie out here showing that, out here showing that print. Ain't nobody try. Hey, you can't be out here showing that print. You can't have a gray sweatpants effect on your work clothes. I mean, if you do, I mean. You might get some extra sales, but uh Yeah, I ain't trying I ain't trying to do that. I ain't trying to do that. I'm still new in these streets, so I, I wanna make sure I go in and I go in fresh. And go in fresh like I'm like it's supposed to be. Also, since last week, I had to do some work on the house. And when I tell you that two years ago, two years ago on the seventeenth, I purchased my first home. And when I tell you, 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 they tell you it's always work to do when you buy a house. They don't tell you how much work it is to do when you buy a house. Because when you do one thing, it creates another thing. And then it creates another thing. And you never, you never done. Them folks at Home Depot think they know you. They always trying to sell you uh, or get you to sign up for their little credit cards. And then you, I always leave out like, I was not trying to spend this much money. You talking about save money? I wasn't trying to spend this much money. I don't want to come back. I hope I don't. But man, we went through we went through so much to get this house. Like we had two houses fall through, and I'm talking about fall through a week before closing, and then four days before closing. So, you know, to finally get this house in it, it was everything that we wanted. Um, like we had, we got space, we got land, we had a a blank slate for the most part. So we can design this house how we wanted to, but the more we try to design stuff and the more money we put in it, the more we find out that the people who flipped it did a crap job of it. So we out here having to like fix stuff, fix big stuff. And this weekend we move our sump pump that was leaking from our laundry room that was in the garage down to our crawl space. Mm, mm, mm. 14 hour job, 11 hours on Saturday, three hours on Sunday. And uh, of course we, we hired a guy to do it and he dope. I'm one of those people that if somebody's working in my house, I help. If I, if I know you, I'm a help. If I know you, I'm going to help, and I help for two reasons. One, because it's my house. Two, 
if I can help you get faster, get done faster, then you might give your boy a little discount. It's actually a third reason. The third reason, so you can learn what goes into these projects just in case you have to do something yourself or you need to troubleshoot it. So in those 14 hours that I was down there with them, no, nah, I didn't learn how to, I know what went into the project. I can fix the sump pump if I need to at this point. But I don't ever want to have to move that thing again. That, that's a horrible idea. <clears throat> but I'm glad I got it done. I don't have to worry about having water on my garage floor because my, cause my washing machine is overflowing, the sump pump not working. But we went through a whole lot. Shout out to Charles Young with Partitions. He's dope. But we got that all squared away. But that was my week. There's a whole bunch of other stuff that happened. We're going to cover some of this stuff later on. What up, Shonda? Guys, if you haven't shared this feed already, go ahead and share this feed. We appreciate you. But let's move on to this Alicia Keys. Because that the Alicia Keys situation hit home. <clears throat> so, backstory, excuse me. The backstory on that, if anybody hadn't heard, Alicia Keys took her son with her to go get manicures and pedicures and stuff like that. Son got a manicure and wanted some rainbow paint. Halfway through, he changed his mind, decided that he was he didn't want to get it. He didn't want to get them to finish, so he was like, "You know what?" Take it off, because people aren't going to like it. Hmm. Now, it's, it's multiple narratives when we start thinking about stuff like this. Talked about it on the radio, and there was a lot of men on the old school side that were like, no, I'm talking about emphatic no's. Ain't no boys supposed to be out here getting their nails painted. I get it. Boys supposed to be boys, right? No dolls. You supposed to play with action figures. You don't be out here wearing all that pink. Blue. Boy, take off your mama heels. Go pick up a basketball or a football or something. Like, these are the things that that a lot of them were saying. <clears throat> well, the women tended to be a lot more understanding of the expression. The expression like, hey, if you want to get it done, let him get it done. What's it going to hurt? I understand that too. And the reason why I understand it is because one of my foster kids, he likes to, he asked us, can he get his toenails painted? He asked him to get his nails painted. We didn't allow him to do his fingernails, but he can get his toenails painted. Now, do I care that much that he get his toenails painted, or is it, would that would that have been one of my ideas? Probably not. We cleared it with his mom, and his mom was like, "Listen, I know my son. I know my son. This is who he is. Cool. Long as he used." Dark, dark colors, he can get his nails painted if he deserves it. All right, that's cool. Now, we had to, we had the conversation with him before we, before we did that. And we let him know, like, hey, listen, you're getting your toenails painted. If you decide to show people, there will be people that will make fun of you. There's going to be people that's not going to like it. He was cool with it. He was cool with it. Now, on the flip side, there was a narrative that asked, where was it going to end? If you allowed your son to paint his toenails, where would it end? Would you let him wear dresses? Would you allow him to eat Skittles for breakfast? No, let, let's be serious. Like, you know, it's one thing to express yourself. It's another thing to... You know, allow your kid to eat itself into a grave. That's not expressing yourself. We looked at the whole thing. I looked at the whole thing and 
I looked at number two, and and he had he has a freedom about himself because he was okay. When he said, "Okay, I understand that people are not gonna like it," and was cool with it, that's the level of freedom that I can rock with. He cool with it. He was free. He's comfortable in his own skin. That regardless of what it is that anybody decided to think about his choice to paint his toes, he was cool with it. He went to school the next day or day camp and was taking his shoes off. Everybody knew. It wasn't a secret. He was showing people and he was cool with it. He mentioned that some people called him gay. He was cool with it. And the thing about that, I was cool with him being cool with it. And the thing is, it's like, he has a level of freedom and a level of comfort within himself that a lot of adults don't even have. It's a lot of adults out here still worrying about what people think. What's somebody going to say? And we ain't talking about it at work. Well, it might be at work. But it's the reason why there's a lot of filters out here on social media. It's the reason why people take 17 pictures to post one. They still worry about what people think. I'm pretty sure when we, when number two gets his uh, social media up, that boy's going to be taking pictures at the top of his head and posting them. He don't care. He just going to post whatever. But that's a level of freedom that that's dope. I had somebody ask me, my actually my manager he does pod he's doing he's starting the podcast and he asked me did I ever worry about what people's gonna say about anything that I said on this show and my simple answer was not really no and because you know you can't please everybody can't try if you try you're gonna go you're gonna run yourself right you're gonna go crazy I say what I say on this show. And it's done. It's out. What you gonna say? You gonna tell me you ain't like it? Okay, cool. You're entitled to your own opinion. And I can rock with that. If you love it, hey, I appreciate Thank you. I thank you for watching. I appreciate your support. Either way, you had to watch it to hear what I said. And I appreciate that. And if everybody agreed with me, Man, I wouldn't have no reason to talk to y'all. And so, that's the freedom that I have that I can get up here and I can say what I want to say, say it how I want to say it. And yes, I call I call women part wolves. And it's funny. Most people, most ladies be like, I ain't got no wolf. Why you got to call it a wolf? Because the P word is a little offensive to a whole lot of ladies. So I try not to be offensive. But wolf, you can get behind. You can say wolf in church. <laughs> if you have a problem with wolf, I at least let people know that. I mean, if it ain't hairy, then it's, it don't have to be a werewolf. It's just a regular wolf. It's Okay. And that's a good segue. I didn't even I didn't even have that down in my notes. But since we're talking about wolves, foxes, or whatever, that just leads me right on into TI. Wow. Okay, so apparently TI part of TI's uh <laughs> Mr. Gohar said no hair is a mole rat. Damn. Hold on. <laughs> Slow down. <laughs> All right. Um, apparently, part of his daughter's yearly is checking to see if that seal was broken. Or if that popper on that glass bottle was a... Uh, you know what I'm talking about. If that popper was up. I was kind of conflicted on this one. I didn't know where I wanted to go with it, but... It was it was two thought processes. I always, I always feel like I I try to look at things from both sides. All right. As a father, if 
that's what he feels like he needs to do in order to make sure his baby girl's fox hadn't been ravaged, by all means, you got to do what you got to do. As a father, I got a one-year-old at home. I don't want to think about it, but just know, if you got sons that's one year one year old at this in this moment, two, three, and think you about to get a little little easy piece from uh, that little one that's at my house, not gonna be able to do it. It ain't gonna be that easy. I'm just going ahead and let you know, this ain't gonna be that easy. And so, but then there's a part of me that feels like <clears throat> that's extreme. Because I don't know how all of this stuff works. You know, Sarita in the chat room, in the Instagram chat room says, it can be broken by wiping too hard, using tampons, and et cetera. That might be a toy. If it's a toy, then... Anyway, um, <laughs> man, y'all have made me call. Anyway, um, do I feel like they should have a good enough relationship, you know, that they should be able to have that communication that when it's that time, when she's thinking about it, that they can have that, that they can have that conversation and... Not that he could just be like, I mean, he can say no. I get it. I also feel like at that age, if they want to do it, they're going to figure out a way. And if she's figured out a way, six months down the road or whenever it is that they find out, 11 months down the road, It ain't like he can... It's done. It's a wrap. Like... Oh, she's she's over 18. I didn't know how old she was. She's over 18. Just turned 18. Just turned 18. Yes, it is a... It is a, an amazing... Uh, it's an amazing lack of trust. But... I mean, who's gonna who's gonna tell Ti when he goes into a uh, when he goes into the place and is like, "Hey, I need to know this." Oh, they said Nea said that's not his place. She's more than old enough to make her own decision on whether or not she wants to be sexually active. Also, a hymen can be broken by more than just sex. Riding, riding a bicycle can cause it. So apparently this hymen is real fragile. I, I you know, I'm learning something. I learn something. I'm learning something every day. <clears> T.I. <throat> walked up in that thing and was like, well, I do feel that there is a perennial dysfunction when a young man allocates his erection in the vicinity of my daughter. It is my personal duty to keep her temple in a pristine condition. Through the precarious manifestations of the verification methods, I will know if she has had that sex. That's T.I. for you. But, no, I can't, I can't say that I would go to that length. That, that's, that's a lot. Also, if there's any fathers in this chat room, have you had that talk? Do you feel like your daughter would come to you and say, hey, dad, I'm thinking about letting this dude hit it. Like, I, I, I feel like most fathers, <laughs> I feel like most fathers, if you was, if you was that dude coming up, and you had a daughter, 
you're going to do everything to protect her from that past you. That can't, you know, and the, and, the, and the little dudes that's out there. Some of them might look at it as, as as a level of karma, but like that's a lot to have to go through. If that's, let me see, is it because of the lyrics he has said that had him going above and beyond? And it's quite possible. It is quite possible. Because, you know, it's a lot of dudes that, that was out there as young men. They have daughters. No daughter would ever come to their dad about, about sex. Not even the daddy's little girls. They said HIPAA regulations wouldn't allow she had to just walk up to to a doctor and ask for his adult daughter's info unless she signs up on it. I can dig it. James Worthy, what's going on, my brother? Like, <clears throat> it's it's a lot. It's a lot. Like, this is one of those things that I'm I'm surprised that it even it even got out in that way. Cause cause it's a lot. Like at that point, is, is she gonna get a whooping if if that hymen was broken? Like, can she even explain that? You know, I was riding a dirt bike, and uh, something just happened. I I don't know. I ain't got no hymen. I ain't never had no hymen broken. So I can't I can't speak on that at all. But I wonder, like, how mad could you really be? Would you be mad that she just went ahead and did it? Would you be mad that she wasn't married when it happened? Would it be mad? Would you be mad that she just didn't run that dude by you first? But how mad could you be if it's already done? I don't know. Some people subscribe to the to that thought process that it's better to ask for forgiveness than permission. He'll probably say no to anybody hitting it. But yeah, James Worthy said, uh, yeah, that should have been left in the private, not public. I agree. I would agree. But while we're talking about anger and, and you know, emotions and stuff, well, yeah. I had to have a I had to have a strong strong talk with uh with the oldest kid about his temper. A lot of his stories start his a lot of his stories, you know, he get in trouble for stuff and it's like hey what happened? And he'll start off and he'll be like well, you know, I was doing this, and I was doing that, and then I got frustrated, and then I got mad. Well, he, they kept doing this, and then I got mad. And that's why I had to stop him. Because usually when his stories are like, and then I got mad, it's either an adult, or it was in a situation in which he could have, that he shouldn't have been in. And when we, he had two is situations in which he got mad this past week and got in trouble at daycare. And as we, as we are, we coming into the house one day, let me see, what day did uh, Monday Night Football? Was it Thursday Night Football? Miles Garrett bust up boy in the head with the, uh, with the helmet. Thursday. It was a perfect example of when being mad went wrong. Like, yeah, buddy tried to take your helmet off. You took his helmet off, you won. Whatever he said right then couldn't have been that bad to make you want to, woo, crack him over the head with the helmet. I don't know, maybe the N-word got him. 
But I don't think he would have dropped that because then he probably would have got beat up by his own teammates. And so then that leaves me with you still in a situation where he's, he made a horrible decision. Like, even if he had thrown the helmet, dropped it, kicked it, or done whatever, Cause would never nothing that nothing he could have done would have been that would have been as bad as what he did with that helmet hitting that dude in the head. Can't do it. Can't do it. And so going back to going back to number one, he caught himself getting mad at the director of the daycare because. Okay, I'm I'm about to get to that here in a second. Um, he caught himself getting mad at the director of the daycare because the director told him to stop doing something. Told him to stop playing. He said that he wasn't playing. <clears throat> now, I'm going to get to this life lesson, but if a teacher tells you to do this, and another teacher tell you to do that, and a director tell you to stop doing whatever it is that you're doing, it's clearly a statement. You need to understand the difference between when somebody tell you something and when somebody asks you what you was doing. <coughs> Excuse me. Now, Mr. Gohar said in his classroom they use a star breathing technique. That's an acronym for something. But it's a conscious discipline skill. Now, he said he was trying to explain what it was that he was doing. She didn't ask him any questions. <clears throat> I'm struggling right now. All right, so she didn't ask him any questions. But he was trying to explain what he was doing. Caught himself getting mad, throwing his gloves, slamming the door. I got mad. His life lesson, <coughs> excuse me, his life lesson was, I need to, I, I, I was, we were sitting in the car. I needed him to understand this. Adult to kid, grown man to kid, I had to bring his brother in too because he needed to hear this too, just in case he thought getting mad was the thing to do. <coughs> Jeez. Excuse me, good people, I'm trying. I am trying. In the nicest way, that I could that I could be. And I told her, I was like, let's <coughs> excuse me. I am trying to be nice. But I was so pissed off. Adults, they don't give a damn if a kid is mad at them. Your mad don't mean nothing. Your mad don't carry no weight. Your mad is like Monopoly money in a grocery store. You can't buy shit. So, somebody tell you to stop doing something, just stop doing it. Okay, stop doing it. She didn't ask you no questions. If she asks you, what were you doing, then you can explain. But we don't need no explanations, buddy. I always feel like he needs to explain, 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 tell you what he was doing. And then get mad when we don't want to hear it. I ain't asked you nothing. I just told you to stop. So just stop. It's just that simple. The crazy thing about <coughs> excuse me. The crazy thing about him is that he always wanted to tell us. <coughs> And then he got mad. I was like, you watch a lot of sports. You see basketball players get mad all the time, right? 
you have a you have a referee, they call a foul. Beep foul. Basketball player in turn gets mad. How many times have you seen a referee been like, you know what, my bad? That wasn't no travel. That wasn't no foul. That wasn't no double dribble. I know you mad, my bad. I shouldn't have called that. No? I'm going to hit you with one of them good technical fouls. Boom. You can take that. But your mad means nothing. Your mad gets you nothing. I, told, I was like, listen, I don't care about you being mad at me. The reason why is you can't whoop me. I ain't worried about it. Look, I'm not worried about it. Listen, you call yourself getting mad at me, you better go somewhere. You better go and get you some milk. What up, Carlos? Grown man, Porter. What's happening, brother? Yeah, none of that stuff. None of that stuff matters. So you can take your little angry ass. Stop trying to look at me like you hard, because it don't mean nothing. If I make you sad, then that's different. If I was in the wrong, if I make you sad because I told you 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 can't play Fortnite, then I ain't worried about it. I was like, your little sister caught herself getting mad. We walked right over her when she throwing her fits. I step over you mentally. You're welcome. And that leads me to the last thing I wanted to talk about. We was talking about expectations of parenting with my dad one day. And I was explaining to him this scenario. And he asked me, Is parenting what you thought it would be? I did a lot of talking. I did a lot of talking and I couldn't give a straight answer. I was trying to figure out, is it what I thought it was going to be? And I didn't know what I thought it was going to be. Because I kind of got like insta-kids. Like, it just, <laughs> you know, I... It wasn't no nine-month pregnancy period or nothing like that. So let me pose this to the chat room. I'm going to pose this same question to the chat room. Is parenting, before you had your first kid or, or however many, what you thought it would be? And I look at it and I couldn't... Like I said, I couldn't give him a straight answer. And I, I was thinking to myself, is it what I thought it was going to be? And then I tried to ask myself, what was the reasonable, what was the reasonable expectation that I could have had? Because, so, I'll let you know. So when we decided that we were going to foster, they... They tell you you got to go through all this training, right? They put you in the, you in this training class with some other foster, you know, potential foster parents, and you know you're sitting there and and they're going through all of these scenarios. Boom, scenario X: if this kid behave, well, this kid has this kind of trauma. Excuse me. You might. This might be some behaviors that they would display. And if they have this kind of trauma, this might be some behaviors that that will display. And this is these are the ways that you can these are the ways that you can discipline, you know, your kid. And these are the ways that we would prefer that you redirected some of those behaviors. And you're gonna run into these type of behaviors when you have this type of kid or these type of kids and you might deal with this ethnicity and you might deal with this race. And with all of that being said, I had the same, same thoughts over and over again. One, that these new kids different. 
This new kid is different. <clears throat> and, and part of it is because, you know, we talk about, I know there were things that I had to deal with coming up that my parents didn't have to deal with. And I know that there were things that these kids deal with that, or these kids have access to, that I didn't have access to at that age. Not that I don't know how it works, but it's a different level of access. Case in point, my parents never had cell phones until they were adult adults. Until I was almost an adult, they didn't have cell phones. I didn't get a cell phone until I was like 18. I was in college before I got my first cell phone. I allowed this, he was 10 at the time, to text. Now, it was super monitored. I let him text on my Google Voice number, so he had... He had this he had one cell phone, but the Google Voice was connected to my tablet and another cell phone. When I was eleven, do I don't know <clears throat> I'm not sure what I what I thought what I would do if I had that level of that level of access to another person. At eleven, fifth grade well, I was sixth grade, but at that age, my access was if I saw you in school. That was it. There wasn't no calling nobody. I don't even know if we had call waiting at that time. In the early 90s, it wasn't, no, it probably wasn't call waiting. And so when we talk about, when we look at access, yeah, he had the phone. And he was texting away. He was texting away. Boom, 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 boom. There was no training on what to do when you gave him a phone and he started texting, well, inappropriate stuff got text to him. Like to the tune of, do you want to get me pregnant? When, on the first day of school in the bathroom. Bruh, hold on. What? You mean to tell me? Like, this was the, that was the plan. That was, that was the conversation that got, that got the phone taken. But there was, there was nothing in, there was nothing that, I, ain't, I wasn't even talking about sex at that age. I don't think. At 11? If a girl told me, like, let's go have sex in the bathroom on the first day of school? I don't, I don't know if I would have been with it. Like, that's, that's heavy. But she went past just having sex. It was like, get me pregnant. Y'all trying a whole baby? Hold on, fam. Y'all trying to make me have a headache. And there was no training. There's no training for that. I feel like my dad had a bunch. Got has a bunch of brothers and or she had one brother, bunch of sisters. My mom has two sisters, and you know they both the oldest. I still don't know if that actually prepared them to to have me. Like dealing with them and then having a brand new baby. I mean, it's it's no. It's no class for that. Like you, you have a baby, you have a baby. And that's just, you learn as you go. You can read all the books that you want to read. And I still feel like there's no training for that. There's, I don't, I don't feel like there's any training for that's going to prepare you to be up at weird times of the night to, to soothe the baby and then turn around and, uh, 
have to figure out the rest of your day because you're still going to work. And so I still, I was still like, did the trainers help me? No, because these new kids different. I feel like a lot of that training was old. A lot of that training had to be old. I feel like the trainings, if I if the trainings helped at all, the trainings were put in place, I guess, to keep you from doing stuff that was going to further damage the kid. Okay, I can I can rock with that. Like they had the discipline training, and part of the discipline training was. They went through all of these, <coughs> excuse me, all of these things that you couldn't do. And I talked to my dad about, I talked to dad about, you know, hey, all of these discipline tactics are off the table. And, you know, we, I got whoopings when I was a kid. Physical discipline off the table. I got slapped when I was younger, off the table. Not saying that that is the the way to go, or you know that is the that is the problem solver. One thing that he told me is that he didn't know he didn't know what he would do if that wasn't even an option or even a threat. Like he didn't whoop us a lot, but when he did, he had to. If that make any sense. But that's not on the table. But they went through a whole list of stuff like you can't you can't make them do like I can make I can't make them do an excessive amount of push ups. I couldn't like they put on there like you can't make them hold books with their arms out like this. You can't um you can't tie them up <laughs> to a chair and put them in a closet. Like they made all <coughs> excuse me. They made whole rules. They made whole rules for this. You can't they like they could be in a corner as a discipline, but they can't face the corner. They need to be faced out. And my girl ain't put a kid in a corner. That's uh that's day punishments. I don't do that type of stuff. Send them to their room. Okay, depending on what's going on. If I just can't stand to be around them and in that moment. But I ain't know, like, I did not know. As I'm, even as I'm talking through this, did it help? Is it, was it what I thought it was going to be? No. No, not at all. Not at all. I don't think that you can have expectations on raising kids just because... Is the expectation on you or is the expectation on them? <laughs> mm. You know, I, I look at, uh, if I have an expectation, I have an expectation for myself as a parent. And my expectation is, hey, <coughs> excuse me, I might have to wrap this up pretty soon. Um, my expectation as a parent is to make sure that this kid leaves my home better than when he came. At least with better habits, um, with a father figure, somebody that's teaching them something, somebody that's instilling a level of discipline. And it's, I understand that there's only so much that you're going to be able to do. There's there's so much that you kind of have to break down depending on how much trauma is there. You have to break down in my situation. 
and then try to reinstill as opposed to one that you are, you know, raising from, from birth. And that you know what's in her. You know, you know the father, you know the mother, you know, like, you know the genes. We don't necessarily know the genes. So, you still trying to you still trying to figure stuff out, and even nine well, nine months in, we still learning new stuff about these kids. We still seeing like, do I have an expectation that when I tell this boy something, I want it to be done? When I tell him, hey, he not smarter than me. I need them to understand, like, but they're not puppies. They're not, they're not robots. You press a button on a robot or a machine, and it does what, what the button's supposed to do. Cool. This one, I feel like I tell these kids the same thing over and over again. Hey, please don't lie to me. I have an expectation that you are not going to lie the next time I ask you a question. Wrong. 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 He's going to lie again. The bad part about it is that I expect him to lie again. It's kind of weird. Because I tell you, I, I tell you, hey, buddy, listen, I just need you to be straight up. But I know you're not. You think you're smarter than me. And you're going to try to get over again. Because you're not ready to be responsible enough just to do the right things to earn the things that you should get. And, you know, you tell them that because you just you just hope that they hear it. And it's like you, you expect them to hear it and, and it's like, all right, I know I'm just putting out there that a lot of kids just don't want their parents to be right. I get it. I went to Korea and I made Korea work because I didn't want my moms to be right. She in the chat. I'll put it out there. Why the f you want to go to Korea when there's people here that can't speak English? Exact words. Korea had to work because I couldn't let her be right. The reverse psychology just don't work on these kids. I'm like, listen, I need y'all to get along. It only actually, I take that back. I take that back. In the mornings, they argue every day. Every day they get up and argue about something. Why are you standing in the bathroom at the same thing as me? You know you're supposed to be brushing your hair. Why are you standing next to me? Why you don't have your shoes on? Why your breath still stank? Like it's just stuff over and over and over again. I get up one morning and I say, hey, guys, go ahead and argue right quick so y'all can get it out the way. Nah, we good. Huh? No, 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 no. Y'all argue every other morning? Go ahead and get on out the way. No, we don't want to argue. Well, I swear y'all some defiant MFs if y'all are not going to argue this morning. Somebody's going to argue this morning. Go over there and stand next to him, number two. Oh, it's okay for him to stand next to you? Use his toothpaste. Oh, it's okay for him to use your toothpaste? Why is it okay now? And not okay any other day. It's because I'm telling y'all it's okay to argue. I actually, I actually really need them to fight one time. I need them to fight one time. I need them to fight, but I can't, number two can't win. And that's the problem. It's easy. There needs to be a hierarchy right now. That's gonna that's that's the way they're gonna be able to figure it out. 
but number two can't win. The problem is number two still makes number one cry when he hit him. Can't be that. It just it can't it can't be that. This this is the problem. This is the issue. I actually give him permission to get that last hit off. Like, I'm like, all right, y'all need to stop playing. Number two, get one last kaboom in. And number one, start crying. I try to low-key instigate it a little bit. Like, man, if that was me. Hey, I, I had to beat the brakes off of him for that one. I wouldn't even... Look, I wouldn't even say nothing if you hit him for that time, number one. I wouldn't even say nothing. I mean, you can go on over there and hit him right now. I ain't even going to say nothing. And he lay on the floor crying. Come on, man. Come on, man. You need to get on up. You still crying now. You still crying. Number two still, number two feeling good about himself. That's too much confidence. And so now he, he'll he be like, you can't tell me what to do. He still feel like that now. I done gave him multiple opportunities to just go ahead and hit him one time. I ain't going to say nothing if you hit him. Oh, you deserve it for him to hit you. And he, yes, a parental instigator. I will. I do it. But I know he's not going to do it. He's not ready yet. He's not ready yet. So I know he's not going to do it. I can say it. But if I if I say it, then I feel like he, I mean, he's not going to do it anyway. Just like they don't argue when I tell them it's okay for them to argue. He's not going to he's not going to fight them because I said it's okay for him to fight them. He'll figure it out. He'll learn one day. He'll learn, maybe. But until then, he will ne him and his brother never have the relationship that they need to have. I expect it to get better at some point in time. I keep giving them the key. And I expect them to use it and to learn, but he ain't ready yet. It's life lessons. Most people are not going to do stuff until they absolutely ready. No matter what it is. If they're not ready to learn, they're not going to learn. If they're not ready to get better, they just not going to get better. It's not their time yet. But it's cool. Yandy, when he does, when, he, when they do fight, I ain't going to let it get too bad. I ain't going to let it get too bad. They need to. They need to fight. They need to get it out their system. It's still pent up. That's why they don't get along. When they get it out their system, my brother and I, we fought one time. We got out of our system. Been best friends ever since. Life lesson. If you got some kids, two boys, not boy and girl. Maybe they just need to fight one time if they're not getting along. They'll figure it out. But look. Yo, I struggled through this thing, man. I appreciate everybody putting up with my coughing and throat clearing and water drinking and everything like that. I'm going to be better. I'm going to be better next week. I might have a special guest uh, with me next week. Um, we got some dope stuff in the works. I will be... I won't be on December 9th. December 9th, y'all get a break for hearing my voice. Um, but I will be thinking about you all. But in, uh, who said that? <laughs> my brother asked if he won. Now, that was the night I beat your legs. I won that one. Um, <laughs> but now, um, until next time. Y'all be safe out in these streets. Yo, it's a whole lot of stuff going on. All these shootings going on. Just be aware of your surroundings. The the trafficking stuff hadn't stopped here. Like I said, guys, guys, please be safe in these streets. I'm trying to tell you, it ain't no game. 
It's real. But until next time, y'all be good. I'm, I'm going to get well. I'm going to go get some medicine again tonight, man. Y'all be safe. I'll holler at y'all.